giving the sculpture some sort of paint and I have seen some videos on on YouTube one is um, first starting out with a gold color and then layering on top so this is for me this is pretty new normally I never take these steps uh, very far but I'm going to try and create something I've never done before some base colors that we're going to try out and it should be like a multiple uh, layer thing. It is Liquitex acrylic. We're going to start with this tube. It's called Iridescent Rich Gold. And then we also have Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Umber. And I have some white uh, that I'll mix with the Ultramarine Blue and try to create something. But I also found that this is pretty decent. It's a uh, deco art and you can get this at Home Depot and it's an acrylic it's very inexpensive I think it was like two dollars so it's actually cheaper than the sort of stuff that you get at a uh, art store here and we're just gonna put it all over the sculpture I don't like to make it too thick in order to lose details there's a, um, a happy middle ground you don't want to mix too much water because you want to use plenty of paint so this is going to be our base coat. If the paint gets a little bit too thick, uh, you can quickly dilute it with water and it'll, it'll disappear. I don't want to lose any details from the sculpture. The paint should highlight the best parts of the sculpture as well. So this is the part where I put that putty, if you guys recall, it requires a little bit more of the gold. And you can tell it's just like glitter, so it's uh, not exactly high-end gold but let's go ahead and keep doing this. If it's too thick, just use some water and it'll thin out. So this is the part I really want to layer thicker. It's this, and we might even have to go over it a few times, but that is fine. First coat of gold paint is on, so now I'm going to let this dry and tomorrow I'm going to see if I missed any spots with the gold color and then I'm going to put the next layer. This is all covered in gold and the gold is pretty decent. You might, if there are spots that you need to take care, this is the time to do it. I'm going to just kind of clean everything out because right now it's very gold and you kind of pick it up, you can see the original color and you want to look around to make sure that everything is good. I am missing just a little bit on the face and it's a little bit hard to see because the light here is not great. So this is what I'm going to use. It is burnt umber. You could get other colors like burnt sienna, raw umber, but um, I'm going to use this. This is acrylic and we're going to add it on top of this so it doesn't look so gold. Now the goal is to basically put a coat over it so it hides it but it yet it still has that metallic look underneath as if it's a, a tarnished sculpture. So let's go ahead and get started. So as it's watery, we're just going to brush it over and we're going to just coat this. The goal is, of course, not to make it look like it's gold. So, and you can kind of remove it, and I want the gold to shine on top of it.
the first coat of the burnt umber and we're going to keep adding it. First coat of burnt umber, I'm just going to tweak it a little bit just by pushing some things. You can take water and dilute things, so if you want the gold to come out a little bit more, use more water. But we're going to add another coat on top of this because the metallic uh, gold paint is a little bit overpowering. I don't want it to be this, uh, it, it almost looks like tarnished gold. Now let's let this dry and then we're going to add another coat. This is dried and you can tell there's a couple more layers. So what I did is we started out with the gold and then we went over it with the burnt umber. You could go over it with all sorts of colors, but you know, and I kind of like the gold. I don't know, it was kind of kind of cool. But you can see some of the gold coming out from the surface. But now we're going to create a patina. We're going to mix some blue and some green together and add some white and then uh, we're going to like just put it all over and it's going to be a very thin coat and it's going to look like it's it's uh, got some age to it because this point is to kind of like make it look like it's metal so I think that's kind of it's working and it does give it a little bit of a difference remember you could always change this if you don't want you could always like make it a different thing so if you don't like this you, know, you can do something else green blue mixture with a lot of white and it's very soupy this might be horrifying or it might look kind of cool i don't know so let's just go ahead and put this on here actually it's a little bit too soupy so i do have a mix here i have like different consistencies so in my cup here this is the um that blue green this is going to give you that patina hopefully and make it look a little bit more bronze like you can even like let these drips fall down and you know this is um and i'm going to try and put it as quick as i can this is kind of going to dry but i want to get this everywhere just make it really so it's as off it's almost as if um i'm getting it on the floor the blue green is basically the color of what um, the patinas are on bronzes. So if this works, I think it'll be a, kind of a, a cool effect. And it might do that for additional sort of sculpture. So I think on video this looks horrifying. <laughs> and uh, quite frankly, it is kind of horrifying to do, especially when you put this kind of like um, the layer consistency on it all right let's keep going you know you could also make it like multicolored if you wanted so you can dilute this with with water if you don't like this kind of the thickness to it but I don't know I think I kind of like it you know this color is going to seep into areas where normally like rain would um in like a outdoor bronze kind of like um the water would collect so i think that's kind of like a neat look just kind of dab it in to get it everywhere you have to and this is going to dry a little bit more transparent Make sure you get under the breasts here and the stomach. The front, and I'm just leaking tons of stuff, but this is how it goes. And now I'm gonna try and get the face, the ears, all of this sort of stuff. Get it like really wet, and it's messy, but it's uh, easier to, to get in. So get the chest. Front of the boots. It is difficult to get your brush into 
the thighs on the other side, but I'm just kind of dabbing it with a lot of color. And it seems to, to reach it. You can even use your hands to reach parts that are a little bit harder to get to. I saw this technique in a really good sculptor's um, videos. Joanna Mosen, uh, I really recommend her. She does amazing work. And so this is how I learned how to do this. So this is not my own kind of like idea. I've seen it in different like um, different videos, but I think hers was the best. And it showed a lot of people use just different um, techniques. So the dabbing motion, you could use this to create a little bit more kind of like interest when it dries off. Kind of has this strange look and I kind of like it. It, all, it looks like it's metal. You can still see the gold. You still see the umber. It's very interesting. I could do a lot of things with it. I could have left the gold, but I think that looks kind of neat. One more step that we're gonna do, and that is protect it with wax. So it's gonna apply a little darker. And I'm just going to put a very thin coat throughout. And you can, um, doesn't require a lot, you're going to do this for the entire sculpture. So I'm probably just going to apply it with the brush first. It feels pretty good. If you touch the sculpture now, it's a very nice finish. One of the problems with ceramic sort of sculpture is that the surface of the ceramic doesn't feel good. It's got that weird porous sort of thing happening. But this is so much nicer to kind of like touch. So I think that's a fairly successful sculpture. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video.